Ah, Turnabout Big Top. Possibly the most hated Ace Attorney case of all time. Every time the subject of least favorite attorney cases is brought up in a group of Ace Attorney fans, this one is bound to turn up. For many people, it's at the very top of their worst cases list. There are defenders of Turnabout Big Top, but far more people seem to really not like this one. The thing is, for me, when I played it the first time, that wasn't my experience. Now, it definitely wasn't my favorite case I'd played till that point, but I'd only played like seven, and this was the third case in game two, so I was kind of expecting it to be more of a filler case, because that's how the first game had been. Turnabout Samurai was the most fillerish of all the cases in number one, but it was still good fun, and that was kind of my take when I went through Turnabout Big Top. I thought it was not the best, but fine. It wasn't until later that I learned how disliked this case is. So is all the hate warranted, or are people overreacting? Does my first impression that this is an okay case hold up, or does it collapse on closer inspection? Let's investigate. As you might expect from the title, the case revolves around a circus. A magician, Max Galactica, who's the circus's biggest star, has been arrested and accused of murdering the circus owner, Russell Berry. So the investigation for the case takes place at a circus, and the cast of characters are a bunch of circus performers. It's a colorful setting that certainly had potential. So where does it lose players? Well, one complaint is about the music. I don't hear this as much as most of the others I'm going to talk about, so I'll address it first. Turnabout Big Top takes place almost entirely in one location, and that one location has one theme song, the Berry Big Circus theme. There are a lot of different locations within the Berry Big Circus, but this theme plays for all of them, so you hear it a lot. One critic of this case even said that this is the only song you hear throughout the whole case. That's an exaggeration. There's another song that plays quite a bit during the investigation segments, More Happy People. That's the song that plays when you're questioning some of the characters, particularly the zanier ones. And there's also a song called True Pain that plays during some of the more sad and dark revelations. But True Pain only plays a couple of times. Some of the other standard investigation tunes also play during those segments. And of course, during the courtroom segments, all the normal courtroom music plays. So sure, there are only three songs that are specifically to this case, but I don't really think it's lacking of enough variety to make it a big deal. Plus, I kind of like the Big Berry Circus theme. It's not my favorite in the series, but it's catchy, it's fun, and at the same time, a bit dark and mysterious. I think that a lot of this is just down to some people not liking the song, rather than it being too repetitive. The other complaints about the writing are a bit of a bigger deal. These problems mostly stem from character writing. What sort of character writing? Well, first off, let's talk about Mo the Clown. Moe is obstructive throughout most of his involvement in the case, and usually treats the whole thing as a joke, only to occasionally become serious and cryptic. And there's really no justification for his behavior. Moe is the oldest friend of Russell Berry, the victim, so he has the most reason to tell the truth. For a while, I actually thought Moe might be the killer in the case because of his strange behavior and mood swings, but he's not. The case kind of tries to play it like he's trying to teach Phoenix some sort of moral lesson, but heck if I know what or why that's so important to him. Whether you find some of his jokes and references funny will be a matter of taste, but at the end of the day, he's kind of poorly written. This is actually one of the more common writing issues that sometimes crops up in Ace Attorney. Characters who are obstructive for no justified reason to pad out the case. Mo is that sort of character. It probably doesn't help that at one point during his cross-examination, the judge penalizes you for Mo not cooperating. If you took too much damage before that, it would make you lose and have to restart from an earlier point, through no fault of your own. Phoenix being the chew toy of the court is a running gag, but it's not quite so funny when it impacts the gameplay. It just becomes annoying. But as I said, this is an issue we see in quite a few cases. The next issue is an even bigger one, though. The Love Triangle. 
There is a love triangle of sorts in this case between Max Galactica, the defendant, Regina, the daughter of the circus owner, and Ben, a ventriloquist who's extremely shy and mostly communicates through his rude, wisecracking puppet alter ego, Trillo. The thing is, both Max and Ben are adult men, and Regina is 15. So a lot of people found this relationship quite creepy. And it's a significant part of the case, because this love triangle is the reason Ben wants Max to be found guilty. Now, the first time I played through this, I didn't really take these relationships very seriously, because, for one thing, Regina is supposedly engaged to Trillo. Just a reminder, Trillo is Ben's puppet. And throughout the case, everyone corrects you that her relationship isn't with Ben, it's with Trillo. So I kind of looked at it like these are a group of people who are detached from reality, and this is more like play relationships than real ones. Like when a 10-year-old tells you they have a girlfriend and you don't take it very seriously. But yeah, a lot of people do find the whole thing creepy, and I can see why. Especially going back through the case and seeing how flirty Max gets with Maya when they meet. It doesn't help that Max is already not a particularly sympathetic character, being selfish, egotistical, and constantly talking trash about his circus co-stars. With this on top of that, many players dislike the guy enough that they don't even want to put in the work to get him a not guilty verdict. And that brings us to what is probably the biggest factor dragging down the case for many people, Regina herself. What's so bad about Regina apart from the love triangle? Well, spoiler warning, if you don't want the whole case spoiled, I'm going to put a timestamp on the screen, skip ahead to that. Regina is, as I said earlier, the 15-year-old daughter of the circus owner, and also the circus animal tamer. According to other people, she's sheltered. So sheltered, she thought it would be a good practical joke to sprinkle pepper on a lion's nose while an acrobat has his head in the lion's mouth as a joke. This caused one of the circus acrobats to end up in a long-term coma and another to end up in a wheelchair after trying to save him. And afterwards, her father tells her the guy in the coma is just sleeping, which she believes. This is less sheltered and more too dumb to live on a level that strains believability to its breaking point. And this is what the entire case rests on, because the other acrobat, the comatose man's brother, is the real killer. He tried to kill Regina as revenge for what happened to him and his brother, and accidentally killed her father instead. Needless to say, a lot of people sympathize with Acro, the killer in this case, more than any other character. His motives make a lot more sense, and are a lot more sympathetic. It's hard to believe that Regina managed to almost kill someone by sprinkling pepper on a lion's nose while his head was stuck in it, completely innocently. That's a mistake a 5-year-old would make, not a 15-year-old. And why the heck is she still allowed to work with dangerous animals after this? You can certainly have a sympathetic villain, and many other cases in the series do, but when the villain is the only sympathetic character, because the others are all jerks or poorly written, or both, that's a bit of a problem. This is a game, not a movie or book, so players have to actively work to beat the thing. And if players don't really like or care about the outcome, it can feel like a chore. Some people also have objections to the accidental Rube Goldberg device that framed Max Galactica. A statue of his head got stuck on a pulley, picked up his cape, and someone saw it being lifted up and mistook it for Max flying through the air. Some people find this really hard to figure out, to the point they thought it was unfair. I never found it to be that bad, it's not the easiest thing to figure out, but there's stuff on a similar or tougher level in other games in the series. So that covers the major problems I've seen people have with Turnabout Big Top, and yeah, a lot of them are pretty substantial. There are still things I like about the case. All the regular cast members are as charming as ever, there's some good humor, and good use of the circus setting for certain puzzles and mysteries. But revisiting the case, I understand why a lot of people have problems with it. Is it the worst? Debatable. It's not my personal least favorite, and I think it being the first case in the series with this many problems doesn't help it, but the problems are almost entirely related to motivations and backstories. It's not something that actually gets in the way of playing through the case, aside from a couple of minor things. So yeah, turnabout Big Top. Definitely not the best. Sorry Big Top fans who might have hoped I was going to be contrarian. 
it's pretty deservedly ranked one of the worst. Although that's also a testament to how the writing in the series is generally pretty high quality throughout. That's all for now. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Be warned, the notifications don't work very well, so you also kind of just have to check up regularly. There will be more book content soon, along with some general talk about certain controversies and hot topics in fiction. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.